Uh, welcome. The Academy for Justice and the Indian Legal Program are honored to co-host this discussion with Arizona State Legislator Jasmine Blackwater Nigren uh, in recognition of the National Day of Awareness for Missing and Murdered Native Women and Girls. I'm Valina Beatty. I'm a law professor at uh, ASU Sandra Day O'Connor College of Law, and I'm the Deputy Director of our Academy for Justice. The Academy for Justice is a criminal justice center at uh, ASU Law that aims to connect research with policy reform. Hi, and I'm Kate Rozier. I'm the executive director of the Indian Legal Program and the assistant dean for institutional progress at ASU Law. I'm also a proud member of the Comanche Nation of Oklahoma. In 2019, the Arizona State Legislature passed House Bill 2570, which created a study committee on the crisis of missing and murder murdered Indigenous women and girls in our state. Arizona was the third state in the nation to pass this legislation. The study committee was the first to include members of both chambers of the legislature, elected tribal leaders, state, county, and tribal law enforcement agencies, the Arizona Attorney General's Office, the Pima County Attorney's Office, a sitting tribal judge, our urban Indian centers, and social workers who specialize in our tribal communities. Now the study committee has published a report in conjunction with the ASU Research on Violent Victimization Lab and with the forward by State Representative Jennifer Germain. The report identifies the many Native women and girls in Arizona who've been kidnapped or killed from 1976 to 2020. The report also identifies the hurdles to finding this information and to identifying the true scope of violence. So with that, we'd like to ask you some questions. Um, Representative Blackwire and Igrin, we're honored to have you speaking with us today about this issue. And I'm extremely proud um, of you as a recent ASU law grad and a participant in our Indian law program. Um, we're just proud that you're gonna be at the forefront of this issue. Um, but now that the study committee has issued a data-driven report on indigenous women and girls as victims of violence in Arizona, what are the next steps for the state legislature? Thank you, Kate. And Professor Beatty, <laughs> it, it's so great to be, be here with the both of you and to be able to talk about this important issue that's, you know, really just wrecking havoc in Indian country, you know, across the country, not just in, in Arizona. And so when I jumped into this, so I was appointed in February, I wasn't elected and I didn't go through the regular like campaign process. And so stepping into this role was a little bit different for me because I didn't really know, you know, what my role was going to be. Thankfully, you know, Representative Germain and my seatmate, Representative Sosi, they've been very open and just guiding me in this whole process. And one of the things that really, you know, was prominent early on was the Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls Study Committee. And I hadn't really realized this before. I think I knew there were different things happening in the world of, you know, the missing and murdered indigenous women area, but I didn't know exactly what the state of Arizona was doing. And so when I was introduced to this role, it was really interesting because Representative Germain had actually introduced a bill this session to extend the study committee. And so she introduced, I believe it's House Bill 20. 99 and um, that bill went through this session and so that's kind of you know our our immediate next steps to address this issue and so what HB 2099 does is it extends the length of the study committee for an additional two years so that's one of the things it does it also appropriates money to continue the study committee and then it also expands the scope and so one of the things that the study committee found was that not only were women and girls going missing, but also young men and boys were also going missing. And because of the scope of the study committee, they were limited to only, you know, studying the phenomena of missing girls and women. And so this, this bill essentially expands the scope and it'll, it'll allow the study committee to 
to kind of dig further and figure out, you know, not just this phenomena of missing and murdered indigenous women, but also, you know, indigenous people in general. And so I think that's one of the big things that's going to happen in the next few years. It passed out of the House. I believe it passed out of the Senate. And I believe the governor signed it. I'm not exactly sure, um, but I know it passed out of the House a few months ago and it was in the Senate. And so it received, I believe, it was almost unanimous when it passed. Um, so there's a lot of support in this in the legislature. And so hopefully, you know, we get to do more work with the study committee and then trying to just dig further in what some of these issues are. And so I believe it was 86, 86 men and boys who came forward in like the Navajo region, north of the 40, and their stories weren't able to be heard because of the scope of the study committee. And so that's the next issue I, I think the study committee is going to tackle. So thank you, thank you for that question. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for being in the legislature this session to support that bill. Uh, and you're a representative of District 7, where many of your constituents are also citizens of the Navajo Nation. Uh, so how do you hope to uh, serve your constituents on this issue? Uh, and you've just shared with us a lot that you hope the, the study will do, but if you have any other thoughts. Right, and so LD7 uh, actually represent eight different tribal communities, communities. So not only Navajo, which is the largest tribe in the state of Arizona, but also the Hopi Nation, um, the Havasupai, Wallapai, San Carlos Apache, White Mountain Apache, um, Southern Paiute, and then uh, Kaibab Paiute, and then also the Zuni um, tribe. Uh, so, you know, an overwhelming amount of tribal support in my district. And obviously this is something that's so important to them. Um, you know, we always think Navajo, but you know, this issue is bigger than Navajo. And sometimes I think, um, you know, smaller tribes have issues with this as well. And one of the things that was prominent to me when I was in law school was just the, the jurisdictional issues that, that come about when you're talking about crimes and missing people on indigenous lands. And so it's something that I, I hope to work further on. I obviously wasn't part of the study committee for the last two years. So hopefully being more involved in that and, and just learning what different tribes are doing, I think is so important. As sovereign nations, they obviously care about this issue. They're obviously working on it themselves as well. And so um, just continuing to work with tribes and listening to them and their stories is so important, important to me. So thank you. I've got another question for you. Um, nationally, 97% of victimized Native women suffer that violence at the hands of non-Native perpetrators. Last year, Congress passed two bills to address this epidemic of violence, the Vannas Act and the Not Invisible Act. Do you think we can anticipate more federal attention to this issue? I do, and thank you so much. I think that's so relevant. Um, you know, Secretary Deb Holland, who was just confirmed as the Secretary of the Interior and who's a member of the Laguna Pueblo tribe in New Mexico, you know, she's been very passionate about this work and this issue. And in particular, she's been speaking a lot about a missing and murdered indigenous uh, women's you know, unit at the federal level. And so I think that's so important because one of the things that the study committee revealed is that there's just not a lot of data on this issue. And there's a lot of um, tribal work that's being done, but also there's the states are involved, the counties are involved, um, you know, the Department of Interior is involved, um, the FBI is involved, and so there's not a lot of collaboration between those different um, entities. And so, you know, having money and money to, to, you know, work together across these organizations is so important. And right now, that's, I think, one of the things is that it's not being funded, like this work, and there's not a lot of cross um, organizational work being done because there's, there's just not funding for it. And so I think with Deb Holland being in her position and um, shining light on this issue, you know, we definitely hope to see more work done at, at the federal level. So thank you. I guess the, the only other thing that we wanted to ask you is there's a lot of 
attention on this issue right now and people are really passionate about the topic. Are there ways for people to help if they want to help or get involved in this effort? Right. So thank you so much for that question. I think sometimes you feel so powerless when something like this happens. I mean, uh, I myself, you know, as a Navajo person, like I follow a lot of Navajo groups, individuals, and it's almost, you know, daily that I see, you know, social media posts about, you know, someone so has gone missing and, um, even from, you know, someone went missing yesterday to, you know, someone's been missing for five, 10 years now. And so these are very prominent, just like in our daily lives as Native people and our social media and, you know, newspapers and on the radio, um, just like how we hear these things every day. It's very taxing and, and like very tolling. And so when we think about, you know, how do we want to uh, contribute to this work, I think continuing to shine light on the issue is always important, continuing to share those stories and continuing to be, you know, just an advocate for, for this cause. Um, because while there's a lot of light um, shining on this issue, you know, it's definitely not enough. And the more we talk about it, the more we continue, can continue to work towards the solution. So thank you. And thank you so much. The Sandra Day O'Connor College of Law acknowledges that the law school is located on the ancestral lands of the Akama Atham and further acknowledges that Arizona is home to 22 tribal nations that comprise 27% of Arizona's total land base. ASU law recognizes the sovereignty of these nations and seeks to foster an environment of success and possibility for Native American students. Since our founding, the law school has been committed to scholarship, service, and teaching in the areas of Indian law and tribal law, and we pledge to continue and expand this work. And uh, I just want to say thank you, Valina, for hosting this, but I also um, hope that you'll feel free, Representative Blackwater Nigren, to reach out to the law school or to our students if you think of other ways that we may be of service on this issue, because it is important work that you're doing. Thank you. And thank you so much for joining us today, um, Representative Blackwater Nigren.